This video describes a new procedure added to Stack Graphics Centurion version 17 called the Multivariate Visualizer Statlet. This statlet displays multivariate time series data that's been collected at multiple locations. The formats available include a bar chart, a pie chart, a profile plot, a strip plot, a star plot, and even Chernoff faces. Toolbar controls on the statlet allow the analyst to dynamically change time. The data we're going to look at are the crime rates in the 50 states and the District of Columbia every year between 1965 and 2010. The rates measure crimes per 100,000 population and cover total crime rate, violent crime rate, aggravated assault, motor vehicle theft, and other categories. The data file we're going to look at is shipped with version 17 of Stack Graphics. It's called crimerates.sgd. You see here that I've loaded it into the first data sheet in the Stack Graphics data book. There's a column named state which contains the name of each state, a column named year that has the values between 1965 and 2010, and then separate columns for the population, the total crime rate, the violent crime rate, murder, and so forth. The multivariate visualizer is located on the Stat Graphics menu under Statlets multivariate dynamic visualizer. It brings up a dialog box that requests the data columns that you wish to plot, how you want to slice them, and what column identifies the different groups. I've already created a number of different views that I'd like to show you. The first is a bar chart. On the data input dialog box, I've selected total crime rate, violent crime rate, actually all the 10 columns that contain the data. I've told it I want to slice by year and identify by state. What it's done is it's created a multiple bar chart for every state and the District of Columbia. There's a column for each state showing each category of crime beginning in the year 1965. The slider on the Statlet toolbar controls the year. If I want to change from 1965, go up to 2010, I'll just move the slider. Alternatively, I can push the right arrow and it will cycle through the different years. You'll notice that as time evolves that the crime rates go up for a while and then as we near 2010 they start to go back down. If I press the right mouse button I can choose analysis options and select different choices for my plot. The first choice is the type of plot I've chosen to show you the bar chart to begin with. I'll show you a few other formats in a moment. The second thing you choose is how to scale the bars. Should the bars be scaled separately for each variable or use a common scale? If the variables differ a lot in magnitude, it's usually a good idea to scale the bars separately so that a bar will have zero height at the minimum for a particular variable and maximum height at the maximum for that variable. That lets you compare the relative magnitudes of the different categories for the different states in different years. You can also choose how to handle missing values. You could have the program not plot a bar if there were a missing value although I've chosen to have it plot the same crime rate as in the previous year. 
You could also smooth the time series while you're plotting it using something like a Lois or Robust Lois Smooth. I can also let time cycle continuously by pushing this button. It'll return to 1965 and then change time through 2010. Once it gets to 2010, it will start over. I think you can see by the changes in the bars that there's quite a bit of difference between some states and other states. You can also see that in certain states, one category of crime seems to be large compared to the others. Now I'll show you a second example using a different format. I've saved a view here using the pie chart format. In this plot, I've plotted just two columns, the violent crime rate and the property crime rate. These two variables sum to give the total each pie has a size proportional to the total crime rate in a particular state in a particular year. The gray slice represents the proportion of the total crime that was due to violent crimes rather than property crimes. We'll return to 1965 and let time cycle again and you can see significant growth in crime in most states for a while and also some interesting changes in the proportion of total crime which was violent rather than property crime. A third format that's also quite interesting is the profile plot. Here I've created a plot showing the crime rates associated with the four categories that make up violent crime. If you look at a particular state like California, I've connected four points, the murder rate, the forcible rape rate, the robbery rate, and the aggravated assault rate. What's particularly interesting in a profile plot is to compare the shapes of different states. Notice, for example, that California and Michigan, and perhaps even Colorado, have a similar shape, meaning that the distribution of crime in those states is quite similar. Other plots, like the District of Columbia, seem to be quite different. If I let time run now from 1965 to 2010, you'll see some noticeable changes in certain of the states. Watch, for example, the District of Columbia, Alaska, Delaware, and you'll see some dramatic changes over time. An interesting modification of the bar chart is the strip plot. The strip plot draws colored strips and then points that would have corresponded to the heights of the bars in the bar chart. If you let time evolve here, you can see the points go up and down as the level of crime changes. It seems to be an interesting way to look at the data. Another way to look at the same data is to create what's called a star plot. A star plot is a glyph that draws a polygon such that the distance out to each vertex of the polygon represents one of the variables you're trying to plot. It's a, another display in which shape is quite important. As you change time here, you can see similar shapes in similar states, meaning that crime was quite similar in those states. And then you see other states like West Virginia where everything was quite small. 
as time evolves, you can watch the change in the shapes of the star plots and get an idea of where crime was growing, where it was going down, and again, pick out states that were similar to each other in a particular year. The final format I want to show you is something called Chernoff faces. Chernoff faces are also glyphs, but they use a caricature of a face to illustrate different quantitative variables. For example, with the Chernoff face, you might use the curvature of the mouth to represent one variable, the length of the nose to represent another, the size of the eyes to represent another, and so forth. If I push the right mouse button and go to Analysis Options, you'll see underneath the radio button for Chernoff Faces a Features button. The Features button is where I go to assign a particular variable to a particular feature of the face. Right now, I've set the eccentricity of the upper face to be proportional to the violent crime rate. So a large upper face would correspond to high violent crime. The eccentricity of the lower face is related to the property crime rate. I've set the curvature of the mouth to represent total crime. And I've reversed it, meaning that it will frown when total crime is high and it will smile when total crime is low. And finally, I've set the size of the eyes to represent the motor vehicle theft rate. Okay. Let's go back to my plot and let time evolve. And you'll notice several things. You'll notice most of the faces start to frown as we get into the 70s as crime got large, but then begin to smile a little more as we get into the 21st century. You can also watch the change in the size of the eyes to see how motor vehicle theft has changed. It's also interesting to look at the shape of the face. Remember the eccentricity of the upper face is related to the violent crime rate and the eccentricity of the lower face related to property crime. You'll see states like West Virginia where the lower face is often bigger than the upper face and just the opposite in some of the other states. The use of dynamic graphics lets you see changes over time that would be very difficult to see in a static display.